Good morning, Brad. How are you today? Hey, Michelle. I'm doing very well. Thank you. How are you? Good. It's actually so nice to see your face and see you live <laughs> versus uh, usually we do audio recording. That's right. Or just a phone call. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. So um, anyways, I want to welcome you to Opportunity Knox today. And I'm so grateful that we're going to have the time to speak to our first male guest on Opportunity Knox. And just as a reminder for our audience, um, Opportunity Knox, we normally feature a female entrepreneur every week where they talk about making, taking, creating, and evaluating opportunities. And we want to do that because we want to provide people hope Mm -hmm. um, that there are opportunities out there because it's so often that people maybe don't see them. And Brad Walsh, who we are joined with today, is the founder of the Empowerography podcast, where he features females every week, female entrepreneurs, and uh, is a gifted photographer. And I am just so blessed that you said yes today. Well, I'm actually flattered and honored to be the first male guest on Opportunity Knox. So thank you very much for that. I am honestly beyond flattered and honored to be here. So that this uh, is a big one. Thank you. <laughs> well, you know the way I feel about uh, supporting others. And I think you do such an amazing job of shining the light on so many talented women, um, including obviously you just finished your first summit, right? Yes. I guess you know, or, or retreat or whatever. Yeah. Was it a week long it was, or day long? No, it was just a day long, a day long event. Um, it was hosted on International Women's Day, of course, to celebrate women. Mm -hmm. uh, it was an all day event. It was from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. We had 24 women speaking. Um, 22 of those 24 women were speaking on five, across five different panels of discussion by various topics and then we had a keynote speaker and we had a woman that kicked off the conference with a 10 minute talk to begin things so it was just an incredible day filled with inspiration and energy and i could i can't say enough good things about it it, it could not have gone any better honestly i mean and how amazing is it that you basically spent a day as a male you know yeah. you know dedicating your entire day to highlighting women and yeah. the amazing things they're doing in this world to move it forward. Yeah, it, it was amazing. I had a co-host. I did not do this all alone. I can't I can't take full credit for that. Um, I had a co-host because I thought that it would probably be a better idea because the day is about celebrating women that I take a back seat. Mm -hmm. um, and I had my co-host kind of take over the emceeing duties of the conference. I just piped in here and there. Um, because the day is about women, I figured why I'm not going to take the spotlight away from anyone. I'm a male. I, you know, it's not my day. So did you did. play a role at all in that day? Curiously, because I unfortunately wasn't able to tune in because I was doing my own um, stuff on International Day of the Women. But what um, did you play a role? Because I do think yes. I actually do think it's important that you are highlighted as well. Yeah, I did. I was involved in it. Um, my co-host, Cecilia Tement, she did most of the questioning um, for our panels, but I piped in on with different questions as well, um, gave a little bit of insight and feedback here and there, but the day was about the women. It wasn't about me. It was just about the event and celebrating women. So I figured it was best that I don't take it up much of the spotlight for that matter. I mean, all the women who participated know that it was my event and that yeah. I was a big part of that. And I was, it was my brainchild. Um, but I figured it was best to let the women just be highlighted. And I think that's very, uh, very kind of you, very humble of you to take that position. Thank you. Um, says a lot about your character. Well, thank you very much, Michelle. Yeah. So um, what I wanted to do was first, you know, kind of start by t having, you know, you tell the audience a little bit about like, how did you come to doing the podcast for Empowerography? But how does your photography sort of play into this as well? Because I think that was one of the things I learned about you that I was like, oh, that's interesting. It, was such <laughs> a, it wasn't as linear as one may have thought, you know? Right, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, well, photography is a huge part of my life. It's, it's been a part of my life for many, many years. Um, and I am involved, I'm a boudoir photographer. That's my full-time business. So I'm already well involved in women's empowerment and body positivity and self-confidence and all of that amazing stuff um, through the boudoir photography. But 
my journey as a photographer obviously didn't begin with boudoir. I was more on the side of landscapes and architecture and creating art. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't want to photograph people, actually. I had no desire to photograph people. Interesting. Yeah, it's, it's funny the way things work. I mean, it, it just happened to work out this way. Um, I've had my business for 11 years. And while I was building my business part-time, I was working at an accounting firm as an audiovisual technician. And it was through that job or through my career there, because I was there for 12 and a half years, wow, that's a long that time. I found a love for photographing people. I was um, tasked with the responsibility of doing the corporate headshots for the professional staff at the firm. And that's where I fell in love with photographing people. I loved that I got that connection time with each individual as I sat for their portraits, where I could learn a bit about who they are. And I just, I really enjoyed the human connection. And that's where my love for photographing people started. And a few years following that, I was introduced through a mutual friend to a boudoir photographer who's based in Florida. And I fell in love with her work. And of course, the message behind boudoir was what you can accomplish and help women feel confident and love their bodies and instill these values and help instill these values in women through the photography. Um, I ended up mentoring with this woman for six months. And when I was done my mentorship, in Florida or yeah. in Canada, because you're in Canada. Yeah, we just yeah. mentored, did mentorship over Zoom calls and phone calls and whatnot. And she basically mentored me for six months. And when I was done, it was one of those light bulb moments or lightning strike moments. I just knew that that's the direction I have to take my business when I do make the jump from corporate life to entrepreneurship. And um, my daughter's are a big, big part of that as well. I have two daughters. They are now 20 and 22. Mm, and they that. are a huge part of why I do what I do with the podcast and with the photography. Um, a big part of that comes from the fact that they were both bullied as kids. Mm. Um, my youngest was bullied by both boys and girls verbally and physically. And my oldest was bullied by girls verbally. And mm. to, see them as a, to see them go through that as a parent is heartbreaking. And yes. it was a horrible thing to go through. And I feel for them, my heart broke for them. But I think what was worse as a parent was seeing the different stages of their lives that they carried that with them mm -hmm. from uh, elementary school to preteen years to teenage years. And then, of course, now their young adult lives, the effects are still very prevalent. And it's heartbreaking. And thinking about that or looking at that from a, through a wider lens, the fact that there are millions upon millions of young girls and women who go through and deal with that on a daily basis and have it affect how they see themselves and that they Absolutely. don't love their bodies. They don't feel good about who they are. They don't feel confident. Mm -hmm. So with boudoir photography, if I can shift that mindset just a little bit of my clients who come through the door for a shoot and have them leave feeling confident in who they are and loving their bodies a bit more than when they first walk through the door, that's what it's about for me, being able to instill those values and help women see their true beauty because every woman is beautiful. Yeah, I agree with you. And I think the thing is, is that we know that one of the largest things that women are challenged by is, is self-judgment, right? Yes, and sure. um, yes, confidence uh, is another one of the obstacles that they have as well. But yeah. tell me a little bit about your process. Like, how do you help somebody feel more confident because here they are in, in their most vulnerable state, yeah. you, they're entrusting themselves with you, yeah. you know? Yeah. Well, it, it's honestly, the process really starts from initial contact when, when they reach out to me, when potential clients reach out to me, um, that's where the process starts is building that trust and rapport with them. I always make sure that they know that there's an open line of communication. If they have questions, feel free to reach out at any time. I have a questionnaire created that I go through with each one of my clients or potential clients, asking them different questions. And of course, the first question or the most important question for me anyways, is why are you doing this? Because mm -hmm. so often I find that women will say, well, I'm doing this for my partner, That's my husband, my wife, whatever the case mm -hmm. may be. And to me that that's the wrong not I don't want to say the wrong reason but you should be looking at this like you're doing it for you first and foremost mm -hmm. to help you deal with any issues you any confidence or whatever it is to build yourself up mm -hmm. yes of course I mean the images are just a byproduct of the experience it, what it is is it's about the whole experience of shooting and and having that experience of empowerment and feeling beautiful and feeling sexy and feeling amazing about who you are Mm -hmm. So um, that the, we go through the questionnaire. Um, and another thing I like to instill or tell my clients is that 
so often boudoir gets associated with lingerie. If you, mm -hmm. That's the first thing people think. I tell my clients that you don't have to wear lingerie. It's not a prerequisite. You can wear whatever makes you feel beautiful, whatever yeah. makes you feel confident, whatever makes you feel sexy. If that happens to be a pair of jeans and a tank top, so be it. Let's go. Exactly. We'll do it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also constantly during the shoot, keeping it light. Um, I like, I want my clients to have fun. I'm showing them the back of the camera to show them what we're capturing so they can see how beautiful they look. Mm -hmm. And that I think helps establish trust as well, because we're connecting. I mean, as you said, they're in their most vulnerable state. So building that rapport and that trust and showing them what we're capturing together as we go through the shoot. I'm constantly, I would say every 10, 15 minutes, I'm showing them the back of the camera to show them what we're capturing. Yeah. Um, so they're not sitting there wondering, well, is this guy getting any good images? Like what exactly. are these images look they like? They feel like they're a part of the process. Yeah, exactly. They're not just, they're not just feeling like you're witnessing them. It's yes. actually an integrated experience. That's right. That's right. Yeah. I mean, Which makes they, it beautiful. Yeah. I mean, when they come in, they have an hour with my makeup artist. They get their hair done. They get their makeup done so they feel beautiful. and Totally. They, yeah, it's it's all about that. It's all about the experience. Um, wow, you're making me want to do it. I've never even <laughs> thought about it. <laughs> come, on up, come on up to Canada. I'll, I'll yeah. Do well, you know, one day we'll see. Yeah. I mean, yeah. one day when the borders open again. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly. So then, how did you parlay the boudoir photography into empowerography? Like, do you? Uh, it's interesting to me because I'm sure right now most of your interviews are on Zoom, like mine are, right? Yes. So do you sit there? So I think about yourself, you're an artist, right? Like right. a photographer is an artist, right? Yes. So do you ever sit and say to yourself, like, as you're staring at someone, wow, I wish I could capture that on film. Yeah. Oh, wish, you know what I mean? Like, oh, that expression was so perfect or whatever it is, you know? Yeah. Um, well, the whole podcast was born out of COVID, actually. I mean, um, last March, we were at the point where I can't, photograph any session so I thought you know I heard so many people complaining about the fact that they're stuck at home and this isn't fair and they don't know what to do and I just thought you know what I can't be part of that negativity I don't want anything to do with that I'm going to actually take this time that every single one of us humans on earth have been given right now and flip the narrative and do something good with it do something positive mm -hmm. and this is where the podcast came in I thought this is the perfect opportunity where I can focus all of my energy and all of my creativity because I couldn't use my creativity for photography. Yeah, I might as well do something with it. So that I'm going to create the podcast. I'm going to bring this about. I'm going to focus it. And because everybody and their dog has a podcast. So oh, yeah. you've got to do something different. that's <laughs> going to make you stand out, right? Exactly. To differentiate you. Totally. So I thought this would be it. I could, because I'm already well involved in women's empowerment, I thought, why don't I just flip that over to a podcast and focus solely on women, women in the entrepreneurial space or women who work in the corporate world, mm -hmm. women that have a story that they want to share and just help them get that out there through this podcast platform. So that's where it was born out of. Um, it's, uh, it's been an incredible year. Um, I just, I really, I just started reaching out to women on Instagram explaining a bit about Amazing how we can make relationships so easily yes I know. all the negatives that people say about it there's so many positives there right? is 100 i couldn't agree with you more there are downsides to it let's be honest there's a yeah. lot of downsides to it but there is a lot of good that you can accomplish with it so i began reaching out to women on instagram and the response was so overwhelming michelle women were so happy to hear that a man had created a platform such as this to help elevate them, to help amplify their voices and get their stories out there. And it honestly, I mean, I set the goal that I would create 52 interviews. Um, and of course, at that point in co with COVID, I thought, and I'm sure the rest of the world thought this as well, three or four months and we should be out the other side of the pandemic. I'll have this content created. I can get back to shooting. Yes. I can kind of have my cake and eat it too and do both things. But of course that didn't happen. So Again, all of my energy was focused into the podcast and the women I was interviewing were recommending women left and right. You've got to interview this woman, Brad. You've got to have this woman on and this woman would be a great fit for your podcast. And it just grew into this community of incredibly inspiring women. And I, I honestly, I love every one of these women's stories. Mm -hmm. the I pull inspiration from every single one of them. 
the adversity that some of these women have overcome, the journeys they've been on, the, the roads they've walked. I mean, I had you on. Yes. I had so many other ways. It's, it's been amazing. It's yeah. been phenomenal. It's been such an incredible journey. You know, what would you say the greatest inspiration has come from you developing this podcast? Like, what was the greatest thing about this journey? Hearing the women's, the inspiration I pull from the women's stories, it's that's it's that simple that being able to sit down with each woman and hear their story and have an impact on others. Mm -hmm. The goal of the platform is to reach, help and inspire as many women as we possibly can together as a community, because that's how I look at this now. This podcast doesn't even belong to me anymore. It's the community's podcast. It's all of ours. It's a community effort because without women like yourself and mm -hmm. all the other Oh, there is no podcast. So for me, it's having an impact. When I get messages from women saying, thank you for what you're doing. This is amazing that a man has stood up and taken on this, this role to help empower women. That is the inspiration I get. So tell me, you know, when you say to yourself, okay, this started during COVID, like, mm -hmm. you know, obviously you have a growth mindset because you just pivoted and you were like, okay, what can I do to provide something positive to people? Yeah. You know, now the podcast is up and running and yep. hopefully by June, we will be a little bit more open, right? There's the hoping. <laughs> so where do you see this going? You know, because like you said, a million people have podcasts out there. Yeah. And I think a lot were sort of, you know, Buzzsprout and all these great, you know, uh, platforms to host yeah. all these podcasts probably grew exponentially during this time. Oh, I'm sure they did. Um, but tell me for you, where do you want to go with it? I see this becoming my ultimate goal for the platform is to turn this into an in-person women's empowerment conference that travels around the world. That's, that's my I ultimate love that goal. Idea. That's, I that's love where that I want idea. to take it. That's where I see it going. And I'll I set the intention you. for me. I'll be there to help you. Awesome. I love that. Any help I can get is greatly appreciated. I mean, I set the intention for myself at the beginning of this year that within the next three to five years, I will have, put on and got under my belt my first in-person women's empowerment conference. And that's why we started this year with the online in the online space. I mean, obviously we had to, but I figured why not get my feet wet with starting with an online conference. And we plan to do it again next year, um, 2022 on, Mar on March 8th to celebrate International Women's Day again. And how beautiful is that, that we did get to start online? Yeah, so it's- of the things that we probably were avoiding yeah, became much easier for us to accept. For sure. Yeah, it, it was an incredible experience. Um, I do also want to, when things do open up, as you said, hopefully in June or July, whatever the case may be, I know that things are a little bit worse off here in Canada than they are for you guys. Um, but I would love to host retreats, in-person retreats, more intimate gatherings of say 10 to 15 women mm -hmm. for a weekend retreat where the women can bond and, and become closer and through different activities and have different experts at these retreats. Um, I want to host masterminds online and I, there's so yeah. many things and so many places I want to take this thing. So tell me when you think about doing these retreats or, mm -hmm. you know, gatherings of yeah. any different kind, how do you, you know, do you see bringing in more men like you into this fold? Just um, I have honestly, I haven't really thought about that. I think we do need to bring more men into and make more men aware that mm -hmm. this is an issue that needs to be worked on. And, we, and more men do need to get involved in it for sure. 100%. Because as far as I know, I, I don't personally know of any other men doing anything like this. So I think that gives me a unique advantage too, Absolutely. because I've created this niche um, where I've got the podcast and want to further that and grow it. Um, I guess eventually I would like to have men involved in it. Um, but I think for now, over the next little while, I think I'll just keep it focused on women. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. that sounds great. So do you have an inspiration? Is there somebody that you look to in your life and say, wow, I look up to this person because of, you know, or every day I use this as my mantra. That's totally different, a mantra. and Yeah. Um, or, but my, just curious. My mom and my grandmother and my daughters and my wife, they are, they are why I do this. They are the, the entire reason. I mean, 
my mom and my grandmother without them I wouldn't be the man I am today and mm, that's because lovely. of their strength and courage and what I've seen them go through in their lives um they they are it they are why I do what I do mm. because of what they've given to me it's my way of giving back and saying thank you with this platform because of what these women have brought to my life is my way of saying thank you and giving back to women to help elevate and amplify their voices because of these five women that's so beautiful thank you and do you set intentions every day do you have like something that you look is there you know particular thing um, you repeat to yourself? i just try to do my best um i i think it's important i think something that we need to instill self-limiting belief as you mentioned at the outset is a huge problem so i mean i struggled with that for quite a while and so it's just reminding myself that you know what there there is no competition i te i tell myself there is no competition for me my competition the only competition i have is me as long as i'm improving that's all that matters i don't care it doesn't matter what other people are doing i'm not in competition with there's enough for everybody to go around there's abundance for everybody so that's basically what i that's my thing that i tell myself well, I think that's where we uh, resonate with one another because I am very similar, you know, yeah. Um, I, I, yeah, I believe just like you do that I was brought into this world to serve people. Yes. And I couldn't see that as clearly probably earlier in my life, but right. I feel like um, I'm not, people may call that dreamer mentality, but I actually believe that it's attracting, you are what you attract. Yes. Right. So think sure. about all the goodness that you brought forward to everyone and look how all of that's coming back in spades to you. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. That's yeah. I can honestly say that within this last year, since I started the podcast, I wholeheartedly with every fiber of my being believe that this is my mission and my purpose in life is to give back and impact women and elevate women and amplify their voices through the podcast and through my photography. This, this is why I'm here on earth. And yes, I found that a little later in life, but I found it. So that's, that's what's important. <laughs> you are too kind. <laughs> so um, I would love it if you could share like a tidbit, like something, you know, that only, you know, secretly your mom or your um, or your grandma or your wife might know about you, like something that motivates you or drives you. Oh, um, just seeing them and what they've accomplished in their lives. That's just knowing what they've been through and what they've gone through, and what they've done in their lives, um, seeing how courageous and, and amazing they are and their determination to succeed. That's, that's it. They are, they are the inspiration. Mm -hmm. They are everything seeing what they've done. I mean, when I was a kid, my mom left my biological father when I was 10 years old. And of course, back in those days, the women stayed home to look after and raise the kids while the husband went out to work to support the family. So looking back on that now as an adult male, the incredible strength and courage that my mom had to do that, to just pick my brother up and I and leave. I mean, we left with nothing. We took the clothes on our back and that was it. She had to reintegrate back into the working world after being out of work for over 10 years. Wow. She had no choice. Um, so that courage and that strength, I mean, my grandmother helped raise us. Mm -hmm. And then my wife with all that she does. And these women are just incredibly strong women. And I pull all of my inspiration from them. Mm, I love that. That's such a, what a beautiful tribute and gift uh, to be surrounded with women of strength, by the way, and yeah. of resilience. Because really yes. the word that came up for me was really around resilience yeah. um, related to your own mom. So, um, what I would love for us to do is make sure that people know where to find you. Oh, um, sure. Yeah. So that when the borders open, <laughs> yeah. but we don't have to wait for then, you know, no. there's obviously a lot, much wisdom for you to be sharing. So I'd love for people to know where they can contact you and sure. the best yeah. way. Yeah. They can um, follow me on Instagram at empowerography podcast. Um, I'm always looking for guests. So if there are women out there listening that feel they want to share their story, just feel free to reach out to me. You can reach out to me at empowerographypodcast at gmail.com. I'm always looking for guests. You can check out my photography work at visuphoria.ca. That's V-I-S-U-P-H 
O-R-I-A.ca. My podcast is currently hosted there as well. Um, you can find my podcast on Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, all of those platforms. I'm actually now currently working on separating my photography brand from my podcast brand. So I'm working on a web, building a website for the podcast. So that should be up and running in the next month. Um, yeah, that's, that's it. Well, I think that though, you know, what I will say, having participated in your podcast, um, he asks amazing questions. <laughs> Thank you. He is, uh, he's a pro at it and he definitely makes you feel like you're such a part of the process. And uh, it, it was great actually being interviewed. I'm glad I'm happy to hear that. A lot of things and that was actually super great. But I do Thank have you. one last question. Sure. Because I okay. meant to ask this earlier, but I was super okay. curious. So you know, it's interesting. You worked in a very stable work environment yeah. in accounting, yep. even though you had a specific role, was more creative. Yeah. Um, and then you kind of moved in this very dynamic, almost um, unknown, like so many people mm -hmm. know nothing about your industry, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so what was that transition like? It was scary as all hell. I, can, I remember for about a month and a half before I gave my notice, my stomach was in knots every day going to work. Okay, I got to build the courage up to do this to hand in my resignation letter. And it was tough. It was a lot. I mean, I mean, entrepreneurship, as you well know, it's a roller coaster ride. It's not all puppy dogs and rainbows. And yeah, we wish it, it was. is. <laughs> Pardon me? I said, we wish it was. Yes, yes. It's tough, but you know what? I would not trade it for anything. It's the most incredible feeling. I mean, you think about the millions of people in the world who never find their purpose or mission in life. And to have found that now and to have what my purpose and my mission is impact people and give back to people, there is honestly no better feeling in the world. So it's, it is worth all the risk, but you have to work your ass off at it. I love it. I love yeah. that you're saying these things because these are truths, you know, yeah, truths that sure. all people need to know um, when they're entering, but not to be afraid of it. Yeah, exactly. Embrace it. Just yeah. you got to take the highs with the lows. It's all part of it. Just don't give up because you never know how close you are to mm -hmm. getting to that next level. Absolutely. So what are your last words of wisdom for women around opportunities? How do you think they should be? Because, you know, and I don't like to use the word should because I'm not a shoulda, woulda, coulda. <laughs> but you do interview quite a few uh, women. That's your, like me, that's yeah. your, you know, domain. But yeah. it's a man's perspective, right? Yeah. And we talked about self-judgment a little bit. We talked about, you know, overcoming that. Yeah. But what would you say to a woman? That needs don't to don't let that self limiting belief stop you go after everything you want because you can honestly accomplish anything you want in the world you just have to put in the work the the self limiting belief is the biggest demon you've got to battle so do the self work do as hard as it is do that work and conquer that and you can do anything if you can do that you can get past the white noise from all the other external sources that you have to deal with. That one is the biggest one. Just don't give up on your dreams. Just keep pushing because you can do it. And that's something that my wife and I tried to instill in our kids from a very young age is that you can accomplish anything you want. Like women have enough shit to deal with from men, mm -hmm. right? So that's why we try to instill these values in our kids from a young age. I think that needs to be instilled in our kids from a young, boys and girls. Great. Girls okay. more so, I think, more especially because of, the other sources of shit they have to deal with, Absolutely. but push through it. You can do it 100%. Mm, well, I love that message. And I'm just so grateful that you came on today and, you know, sharing your wisdom, but from your heart and really, you know, sharing what you see from other women, because that's how we learn. That's right. So Michelle, I am so honored and grateful and, thankful to you for this incredible opportunity and to be the first man on your platform. That's right. And, the first honored. Honored. and I've thought about other men. I really have. It's funny because, you know, people ask me often, like, you know, so you only work with women? And I'm like, no, actually, I love men. I wasn't the woman who ever had issues working with men right. in the corporate world. Yeah. Uh, super outspoken. However, 
Um, I was like, well, should I be remaining true to just women? But I was like, no, this is about women gaining perspective from all peeps, people and particularly you who's dedicating your life's work to women and seeing them grow is, it's, it's my pleasure actually featuring you. Well, so, thank you. Thank you, it's... Brad. Thank for your you. time and please look up the empowerography podcast he's got yep. some amazing women on there that will inspire you so much so absolutely everyone have a great rest of your week and download us and subscribe to us. <laughs> <laughs> thank you again so much michelle this has been an incredible conversation and i appreciate you oh uh, well it's my pleasure to have the opportunity to speak with you All thank right. you